and your anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden you've called us to the kingdom of God for a time like this what the devil meant for evil you are about to turn it around for our good for you have not given us as a prey to the enemy's teeth but you have sent your son to demonstrate your love towards us that even while we were in sin Christ died for us and you said if you gave him for us while we're in such a deplorable condition how much more will you do for us now that we are in your amazing grace hallelujah and we thank you that grace is available and grace is abounding towards us even now every work of satan we bombard and bind and shut down right now in the name of jesus we plead the blood like rain over this place in the name of jesus cramp and paralyze melt and break down cancer pluck up scatter plunder the gates of hell and release power Oh, for your people right now to rise up and to stand and to give you the glory. Oh, because you said it. Arise and shine for a light has come and your glory is risen upon us. We embrace your anointing. We know that you're teaching us, you're, you're encouraging us, you're building us, you're shaping us and molding us to be conformed to the image of your son. And we embrace your truth in the face of Jesus Christ. We embrace your glory as your fullness shines in us. Hallelujah. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is being renewed from glory to glory day to day you're showing up your power in us and we thank your God that we can declare before the enemy greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world we got the victory in Jesus' name and refuse to accept anything else hallelujah we give you glory, Father. Come on, give him the glory in the house. Let everything that had bread praise him in you. Raise up a praise to the King of Kings. Raise up a praise to the Lord of Lords. Give glory to the Lamb of God. Satan is defeated. God is exalted. And we are in his midst. And he's come to do us good. To reveal his glory in our lives. And the gates of hell. Huh? Shall not prevail against it. Glory to God. Come on somebody give him the praise in here. Hallelujah. 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 We give him glory. We give him praise. You may be seated. You're going to declare the word of God. Set the pace of what God is doing in the house. Because the devil is a liar. We come to war by faith. And claim the victory over that wicked one. He got no power here. Come on somebody. Somebody declare greater is he. That is in me that he that is in the world come on now give god a praise hallelujah 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 glory to god the devil is a liar he is defeated he's already lost the battle and we are here to decree and to declare it. Come on. 
that the word of God is true and everything he promised it will come to pass hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Jesus said it in Matthew 28 verse 18 all power ah, all authority hallelujah has been given to me in heaven and on earth all what all authority somebody say all authority somebody say all authority has been given to Jesus and as I join here with Jesus all authority has been given to me both in heaven and on earth come on somebody Jesus was just talking here about him just having authority he was telling his disciples that as his disciples they share in the same that's why he could say to them go therefore it is on that premise that he declare all power is given to him that he can send them out with power hello somebody they didn't come just to come they didn't come just to add to the marketplace of those who are speaking but they come with power somebody say we come with power come on somebody and he sent them out with what he sent them out with what power not power power you know what yes that's what he sent them out with power and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it he says we are to go and make disciples of all nations and there are other nations that have not received the word we have received that even oppose the word we have received that even scoff at the word received that even mock at the word received that even get violent at the word we have received but God said he has given us power I hear somebody said there is power in the name of Jesus and we come in that name and that was the name that David stood up against David at David stood up against Goliath and said you come with sword and with spear but I come in the name he didn't say I come with sling and stone he says I come what in the name of the Lord come on somebody so though he had sling and stone it was the sling and stone he was depending on come on he says I come in the name of the Lord and the word of God declares blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord ask your neighbor what name did you come in because if you come in that name you come in a power you come in a blessing you come in a favor you come in a grace you come in an anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden and you are to know you bear that name and don't you dare bear that name in vain come on somebody you can't have such a powerful name and live under the power of satan you got to rise up and declare the lord liveth the lord reigns let the earth rejoice let the people be glad because our god reigns he says all power is given unto me both in heaven and in earth come on somebody and he told them go therefore therefore he says go baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit what is that name jesus that name is given by the father that name is worn by the son that name is testified of 
by signs and wonders by the Holy Spirit. And Peter said it in Acts 4 verse 12, there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name. Come on somebody. Huh? Nor is there salvation in any other. Come on somebody. Huh? Come on. So we know that name is what? Jesus. The world today just want to say God. If you just say God, let our people be your friends. Because they have all kind of gods. Hello. And some don't like you to hear you say God at all. But when you say Jesus, it even burn them even more. Hello, somebody. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And he sent them out with power. He what? He sent them out with power. Power accompanies the preaching of the gospel. What is a accompany it? Power accompanies the preaching of the gospel. Mark 1 verse 23 to 28. Mark 1 verse 23 to 28 says, There was in their synagogue a man, huh? In their synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying what? Le let us alone. Which is the us? How the one man crying out? He never said men crying out. He says a man. Come on. A man with an unclean spirit. But there are many spirits in that man. Crying out. Come on. So it's not he alone in that body. Hello. And he says let us alone. What have we to do with you? That's what the unclean spirit said. What have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth. In other words, Jesus, no keep friend and company with unclean spirits. And they say, we don't have nothing to do with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't have nothing to do with you. So leave us alone. Did you come to destroy us? Come on. I know who you are. Come on, somebody. He come to destroy them, of course. For he says, for this purpose, Christ was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Come on, somebody. Huh? I believe that's in 1 John 3, verse 10. Hallelujah, verse 8. Hallelujah. He says, for this purpose, Christ was manifested to do what? destroy the works of the devil so they know when Christ is around their business mash up their business turn over their business shipwreck come on somebody Jesus come to shipwreck the plans of the devil come on somebody that's why he hates when you believe in that name that's why the devil hates when you submit to that name that's why the devil hates when you stand and abide in that name Gloria come on somebody so he said what have we to do with you Jesus of Nazareth did you come to destroy us of course and he said I know who you are the Holy One of God but Jesus what Jesus don't say yes tell them who I am tell them that I'm the Holy One of God let them hear more from you who I am no, because Jesus knows that who we listen to, we are connected to. Come on. So he, what he said there was quoted right to say, he's the only one of God. Jesus says, shut up. He never said, okay, tell them more. Like some so-called deliverance ministers today, they have been interviews with demons interviews they're doing with demon and putting Micah demon mouth and say tell us come on the Lord said shut up he never said tell them all he said be quiet and come out of him 
Come on, somebody. Jesus don't come to friend with demon. He don't come to work with them. He don't come to friend with them. He don't come to play with them. Come out somebody. And he says, when he says, come out of him. When the unclean spirit had convulsed him. What, what? Convulsed, that means he, he had a resistance to come out. And the man's body was being thrown all over the place. Come on. He, he is ripping and, and throwing the man all over the place. But he had to come out. He had to obey. Come on, somebody. Ah, he cried out with a loud voice. And he what? He came out of him. Come on, somebody. Give me more. Hallelujah. Then they were what? They were all amazed. So that they question among themselves, saying, What? What is this? My God, in the synagogue, they never see anything like that. Not of Moses, not of Elijah, not of Elisha, not of Samuel. Come on, somebody. Not of the other prophets. Have they ever seen anyone casting out demons out of a man? This is a demonstration of the power of the gospel of the kingdom of God. And I want somebody to hear it. Hello, somebody. And they ask Jesus, what new doctrine is this? Come on. They didn't say, oh, we've been always hearing this. Uh-uh. They said, what new doctrine is this? For with authority, come on somebody, for with what? Authority, he commands, he what? He commands, he's not asking, he's not requesting, he's not suggesting, he's not making a recommendation, he commands, my God, huh? and even evil spirits, have to obey him my god they will think oh come on holy men holy angels obey holy men but this was something strange to them that even evil spirits obey a holy man come on somebody this was uncommon because they never saw this in all the old testament record there is not one example of a prophet casting out demons out of a man. So he says, this is something that accompany my God. The preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. Are you here somebody? Hello. And he says, he command. They said, they notice and observe what he did. And they says, for with authority, he commands even unclean spirits. They said, even unclean spirits, not just obedient spirits, such as the angels that are still in submission to God. But he said, even the ones that are fallen, Lord Jesus, have to obey him. Come on, somebody. Hello. And he says, and immediately his fame spread throughout all ah, the region around Galilee. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It is the gospel is accompanied ah, with demonstration and manifestation of the kingdom of God. What you say? Hallelujah. And they didn't know this gospel. But Jesus was now declaring it. Come on. For he says up until the time of John the law and the prophets preach. But up until the time of John he says the gospel of the kingdom was now preached. Come on now. The law and the prophets prophesied until Christ. Come on. But John came on the scene declaring the gospel. Declaring the gospel of the kingdom. Come on. And you notice here. 
he said in Matthew 11 yes Matthew 11 verse 13 it says for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John come on John came declaring a new era now he's saying hey it's good we hear the law it's good we hear the prophets but it's time for you to hear the gospel of the kingdom of God come on and he says this gospel of God's kingdom his governance showing up in the earth in an awesome demonstration and manifestation of his power of his presence and of his holiness come on that is what he wants to show up in you come on somebody hallelujah and he said it hallelujah in acts chapter one he said it that they would receive power when the holy spirit come upon them ah huh? they wrote it is the holy spirit that give you power to command demons those without the holy spirit commanding demons yes if they believe in the power of jesus name demons will flee but demons will also be plaguing their lives unless they receive the power unless they what uh-huh he said it there when he was talking to them in acts chapter 1 from verse 6 to 8 this was after his resurrection and he appeared to them and he said therefore when they had come together they asked him saying lord will you at this time restore what the kingdom to israel they weren't asking at this time will you take us to heaven like what many church asking today it's not going to heaven they were asking about they were asking about the kingdom because he was preaching to them about the kingdom and they wanted to know when would the kingdom be restored to israel and he said to them it is not for you to know the when you get that one it is not for you to know the when but he didn't say it is not for you to for the kingdom be restored to you he said the when is not for you to know but this is what you must do <laughs> hallelujah he said it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own authority but this is what you must do you shall receive power come on now hello the kingdom of god manifests with what power and he says you shall receive what power when the holy spirit has come upon you huh? and you shall be what witnesses to me in jerusalem in our Judea and, and samaria and to the ends of the earth he said this power is not limited hallelujah and is not restricted to a geographical location he says this power goes through all bounds and jesus demonstrated that to them that he didn't just command holy angels Woo! Hello! But he command even unclean spirits. And even they have to obey. No wonder he declared, All power has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. So he told him, Go! Hallelujah! Go make disciples of nations, baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and what teaching them to observe all things i have commanded you come on somebody and what he says and law means to look to behold to take notice i am what with you how much time sometime when you feel strong when things looking good when you look like having success 
when it looked like everything running for you no he says always on the mountain in the valley whether you looking up or looking down in the mount in the daytime and in the night time he's with you how always come on somebody shout always the lord is with me always come on if the one who has all power is with you always ah come on somebody tell the devil say back off you can't even clean your shoes because you got supernatural power and it ain't just supernatural but it's called all authority somebody say all authority make the devil back to the and say all authority belongs to jesus and as i join here with jesus all authority belongs to me hallelujah so when you have authority what you must do you must use it because if your habit are not using it it's gonna be like you lose it because it won't make any difference to you but you are given authority to use so he told them i'm not telling you about when the kingdom will be restored what you need to do is to use the power come on use it come on somebody lay your hands on the sick and see them recover prophesy speak to a thing speak for that thing and watch it come to pass hallelujah take authority over the enemy rebuke devils and demons cast them out come on somebody take authority over your sinful nature and live holy unto god don't just say i prophesy and I, and I do miracles and I cast out devils like those fake believers that the word talk about in Matthew 7 verse 21 to 23 the Lord said there are those that will say in that day Lord Lord have we not cast out devils in your name have we not prophesied in your name have we not done miracles in your name done wonders in your name but then he said I'll declare to them I never knew you why because what you're still practicing lawlessness you're still practicing sin the power of god shows up in your ability to resist sin yeah. jesus wasn't casting out devil while he had devils jesus wasn't casting out devils while he was sinning he was not sinning he was the model to them so when he's teaching disciples he's teaching them to operate as he did not to just claim the power to cast out demon but have no power over the flesh and have no power over sin uh -uh. first thing he do to enlist you as a disciple is to get you out of sin first thing he takes you from being a slave to being a son of God. Hallelujah. And he spoke about that in John 8, verse 30 to 36. He spoke to some Jews who believed on him. But he then told them, it's not just say you believe on me. Pan and upon it done. He said, uh-uh. You need to abide in my teachings that you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Huh? Come on. You need to what? Abide in my teaching, what he called, in my word. In my word. He said, if you do that, you are my disciples indeed. And what? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That free there is not free about cast out demons. The first freedom the Lord speaks about there is freedom from sin. Because they said to him, they are children of Abraham. They are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. So how can they, he said to them, you'll be made free. 
and he answered and told him this is not about being free from a man this is about being free from sin that's what is a requirement to be a disciple the first requirement to be a true disciple is to be free from sin and many are fooled in thinking no we don't have to watch the sin part we can cast out devil we can prophesy we can do miracles in his name then that's good enough god they use where we are right but the first qualification the lord speaks about there is deliverance from sin he explained in verse 34 to 36 of john chapter 8 he said to them most assuredly or verily verily the old king james would say i say to you whoever commits sin whoever what is not whoever committed sin all of us committed sin come on but he says whoever commits that is in present continuous tense the old king james would say committed right so it says that is saying in continuous tense whoever commits sin is a slave of sin in other words says sin is their master sin is their master and he says a slave does not abide in the house forever which house is he talking about the kingdom of god come on so he says yes they can be in there and they can even do things in the house come on they can do things they can cast out devil in the house if they come in they believe in the name but if they believe in the name it must just stuck at just believe in the name they must move now to embrace the person and character of christ in their life so it's more than just believing in the name hello eh? so he says then because he says that you can cross reference on that in mark chapter what 18 mark chapter 16 verse 18 17 and 18 he says these signs would follow those who believe in his name huh? it, these signs will follow those who believe he says in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will take up that is by believing in his name they believe in jesus but he says not all that says lord lord so for them to say lord lord they do believe in jesus they do confess that jesus christ is lord and by believing in the power of that name they are able to prophesy miracles happen because of the power in that name but he says it's not just about miracles and wonders what jesus said here to the to those who are potential disciples to him because they were coming as believers they believed in him according to what john 8 verse 30 says many believed in him and john 8 verse 31 says then he said to those who believe in him ah if you continue or if you abide in my word that's my doctrine my teaching you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall what make you free and then he explained what were they freed from in verse 34 to 36 he says they need to be free from sin that's the first requirement not the last one so many serve in the church with the hope and the last end of their service they finally get a, a, a ability to overcome the sins in their life just before the lord take them home that is not the truth 
Jesus was speaking to these who believed and said, A slave does not abide in the house forever. They may be there, but they will not remain. They will be cast out because they are slaves. Only sons remain. So he said, but a son abides forever. Notice there, he don't say, the son abides forever. Speaking about himself, he says, a son. In other words, your position has to change from a slave to sin to a son of God. You cannot be a slave to sin and a son of God same time. Oh Jesus, hear the trouble now. Hallelujah. That is it. You cannot be a sinner and a son of God at the same time. The boat does not work together. There is a need for you to be cleansed from your sin to gain this access, this position in the Lord. He doesn't take you with your sin, He saves you from your sin. Ah. Glory to God. So he says, a son abides forever. Abides forever where? In the house. Speaking about in his kingdom. He says, therefore, if the son makes you free, you're not temporarily free. You're not partially free. Huh? He says, you are free indeed. This is not some mental freedom. Just freedom as an ideal or a thought in your mind of freedom, but you're not really free. No, this ain't like the world or the world gives freedom. When the world said man was, uh, the, the black people were emancipated and uh, they have come out abolished slavery, they put it on paper. Say it is abolished, but we didn't see it in the life, the lifestyle that was being lived. Come on. They are on a sign still up. White here, black over there. Now they take down the sign, but they still will look on you funny. And give you a little corner to go. Come on, somebody. So he says, it ain't all the world give freedom. This is freedom from the Son of God. And he says, who he sets free. <laughs> it's free indeed. Come on, somebody. In other words, it's not just free in, in the thought or the idea of being free. Come on now. But there is a freedom that they are actually living out. They experience true freedom. And he says, what is that freedom from? Sin. Come on, somebody. Now many use the advocate scripture. You know the advocate scripture, 1 John 2, verse 1. And they use this verse without even embracing what that verse says in its entirety. Because even in the first part of that same verse, we don't even say a different verse. That same verse, John said to them, My little children, these things are right to you. So what? So you may not sin. He don't say, I know you're going to sin and I write to you. So when you sin, you can just ask the Lord to forgive you. No, that ain't what John write at all. John saying to the believers here, if the son really set you free, you will not sin. But if you sin, that means uh, the son never really set you free. You thought you were free. Because he says, when you are really set free by the Son of God, you are free indeed. Man can do some self-effort to appear free when they are not free. There are things that they call self-improvement. And some little self-disciplines you can put in yourself that give you an appearance of being free. But the Lord says, who he himself, the son of God, sets free. Huh? Is free indeed. Come on, somebody. Huh? So he said it here. 
the other, so he said then if one sins what he says if one sins we have an advocate in other words we have someone who can put us back in the system if you fell out of the system there's someone to put you back in the system in the faith for you to come to the place to truly be set free but he's not saying then oh as long as you're in it you're going to keep sinning so remember you have an advocate that was not the case at all and if you read the rest of john you realize that if that is your belief john speaks very strongly against it because even in the following chapter john says that anyone who is born of god does not sin. that's in verse 9 of chapter 3 hallelujah and also in chapter 2 we were just in chapter 2 <laughs> reading from verse 1 but even from verse 3 to 6 john says that those who sin don't even know god huh those who sin don't even know him come on somebody because he said those who know him walk as how he walk that's in first john 2 verse 3 to 6 just a couple of verses away from the verse that says you have an advocate so I don't know how they end up with that say no you're gonna keep on sitting and just ask the Lord to forgive you no that's not at all what John spoke as the gospel John knew from what Jesus taught them that who he sets free uh -huh, is free indeed it's not a partial freedom and it's not a temporary freedom it's not freedom this morning but by afternoon you're going to have to get free again by this evening you're going to get free. because what would that be it would, wouldn't it be like the same freedom the world offer that they say yes the black man is free from slavery yet still they are still being enslaved within the, the the policies that they have to restrict them in certain place to restrict them to certain offices to restrict them from certain finance or wealth come on huh you're still it's not operating still that's how the world operates so they will say freedom but they don't experience that freedom but what the, when the Lord says freedom, you do experience that freedom. And it's not temporary. It is permanent. Come on. We never read anywhere that John had sinned after knowing Christ. We never read that Paul had sinned after knowing Christ. We never read that Peter had sinned after knowing Christ after they were filled with it and baptized with the holy spirit there's no record of that in fact they're preaching against that <laughs> hallelujah come on somebody look at even what it said in first john 2 verse 3 to 6. now by this we know that we know him how do we know that we know him john says we know that we know him if that is on the condition of this being kept if we keep his commandments come on you can't say you're sinning but you're keeping his commandments keeping his commandments doesn't equal sin get the thing right he says he who says i know him and does not keep his commandments is a young believer <laughs> is a struggling christian no Paul, john makes it clear here he who says he knows him and does not keep his commandment is a liar come on and the truth is not in him if the truth is not in him is he said no come on somebody he says but whoever keeps his word come on now truly he says the love of god is perfected in him and he says it's by this we know that we are in him he who says 
he is who says what he who says he abides in him ought himself also to what to walk how just as he walked so tell me how did he walk sin sometime and do it right sometime not at all to walk just as he walked did he tell us how or did he say well just try to do it no he said do it he says he who abides in him ought himself what to also walk just as he walked we ain't changed the word we declare what the word says come on somebody we can't change it to suit how we feel or what is our past experience our life must line up with what the word says come on somebody huh and he says the one who sins has neither seen nor known him the one who what who sins has neither seen nor known him that's why he says they will of course be there where he will say to them depart from me i never knew you this is on the basis of them practicing lawlessness first john 3 still in first john first john 3 verse 4 to 5 he says whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is what lawlessness and you know he was manifested to do what take away sin look at verse 6 now whoever abides in him does not sin there it is that's not a comma there that's a full stop that's a complete statement whoever abides in him does not sin if you don't accept that then you can't accept what comes next he says whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him that's why i say i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness come on that's what you read from matthew 7 verse 21 to 23 come on and it's connected here with first john 3 verse 4 to 7 come on he says whoever abides in him does not sin that's not it may not sin does not come on and he says whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him he says little children let no one deceive you obviously john is aware that others are teaching a different message and are fooling up some deceiving some to believe they can keep sinning and still be safe with god because god still loved them john is saying absolutely not he says let no one deceive you what does he say here he who practices he who what practices righteousness is righteous did you see that and there's not a full stop behind it there's a comma because he talks how oh, righteous is that person just as he Christ is righteous yeah come on now now many don't accept that teaching there come on and John is aware that there are others with different teaching but John was making it clear this is not our position and this is not what we were taught by the Lord himself Jesus Christ John started out in first John to make it clear in verse 1 to verse 5 he made it clear that Christ in Christ there is no sin come on anyone who is in God 
and said they know God knows that they must abandon all leaning and inclination towards sin ah glory to God ah hallelujah it's in first John 3 first John 3 verse 5 to 6 says you know that he was manifested to take away our sin and in him there is no sin in him there is no sin say it again in him the him who that's christ in him there is look at the next verse whoever abides in him does not sin does that have a full stop that is a complete sentence that is a complete statement he's saying whoever abides in him does not he don't say may not does not sin whoever sin he says has neither seen him nor known him first john one we will start all the letter he said to them in verse one to verse five he says in the beginning huh that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon which our hands have handled concerning what the word of life the life was manifest the what the life was manifest and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life in other words we are declaring to you that life we see and hear what life is that the life of christ that is what is called eternal life come on he says we have seen and looked upon handled concerning the word of life the life was manifest we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that life which was with the father and was manifested to us come on he says you and i who say we believe in the lord we know christ did not sin so if he's speaking and declaring that life to us and we are embracing that life now as our life how do we then continue to sin it goes against the life you claim to receive it's not an idea of christ you have received it is the life of christ you have received that is the gift god is giving you through the son that is the life is giving you through the son hallelujah eternal life huh glory to god first john 5 verse 9 to 13 he's given to you that life he said if we receive the witness of men the witness of god is greater for this is the witness of god which he has testified of his son god has testified of his son and he says he who believes in the son of god has what the witness in himself he said the life must be there it's not just to say i believe on him like those jews he spoke to and said if you abide in my word then you'll be my disciples then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free but notice afterwards they had an argument and then he had to end in verse 44 to call them children of the devil come on because they would not incline to the teachings it's the teachings that get them out of sin it's not just believing on Jesus. It's the teaching. As I said, if you abide in my word. Ah. Uh, so it says, for this is the witness of God which he has testified of his son. He says, he who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him what? A liar. Ah. Uh, because what he has not believed the testimony that god has given of his son 
and what is the testimony he says and this is the testimony that God has given us what eternal life and this life is in who see it is in his son it is not with his son that life is in him and he says in him there is no sin <laughs> he said if anyone abides in him he does not sin we read that already come on we even read it twice just to reassure you that's where we're going come on somebody hallelujah it says he that life is in Christ where's that life you cannot be in Christ as the other old creature he says if any man be in Christ he is what a new creation all things are what passed away and behold all he says some things most things oh no he says all things have become new come on that is the transforming power of the life of God in Christ in you Paul put it this way to say I live yet not I but is what it is Christ that lives in me he said that's why he did not say he count himself as dead but Christ living in him yeah. he what he count himself as dead but that Christ is living in him he says I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son the same one in me come on who loved me and gave himself for me hallelujah come on somebody so he says you must consider yourself dead indeed to sin to live in obedience to Christ Paul said that also in Romans 6 hallelujah dead indeed to sin but alive to God in Christ come on huh dead indeed to sin but what alive to God in Christ that's Romans chapter 6 verse 11 to 13 he says likewise you also Paul was speaking to those saints in Rome but many were not living as saints they believe in Christ but still was practicing sin and Paul had to correct them on this in Romans 6 and tell him say that's not the grace they come into grace don't come to allow you to continue to sin and get away uh -uh. Huh? that's what he said in verse 1 he says what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound he says certainly not look what he said in verse 2 certainly not how can how shall we who died to sin what did he say died to sin not dying to sin died dead to it how shall we who died to sin, sin live any longer in it so if we don't live in it we can't do nothing in it because we're dead to it come on somebody so he had to ask them further if they were ignorant of the fact that when they were baptized into Christ they were baptized into his death many saints are ignorant of the salvation they have come to that's why they have not experienced true salvation that's why they have not experienced 
true liberty that sons must have in Christ. Come on. He says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him who baptism into his death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Look at that now. Even so we also should walk in newness of life. Come on. So if you're not walking in that newness of life, how is it that you're in Christ? He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He's walking in newness of life. All things become new, not some, not gradually. All things, it's a miraculous work of God to make us a son. It is not our self-effort that makes us son. But it's as I said, if the son really make you a son, if the son really set you free, then you are free indeed. Come on, somebody. Hello? So he said, you must walk in what? Newness of life. Take it back to the first John 5. Hallelujah. Verse 11. I think we're at verse 11. And he says, and this is the testimony. Huh? What is the testimony? That God has given us what? Eternal life and this life is where? In his son. In other words, you must be in the son. Not just with the son. In the son. He who has the son has life. He's speaking about as that life. What is that life? Eternal life. Eternal life is not mortal life. It's not fallen man life. Man in his fallen state gave life to us through their mortal being. But God is saying you as children of God did not come by the works of flesh. This is by the work of the spirit. Ah. Uh, so it says, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. In other words, they don't have that life. They still have mortal life. That's why we're preaching to them. We didn't go out that book to talk to the dead bodies in the grave. We're talking to people that have life. But what the life they have is mortal life. Mortal life is not eternal life. He's speaking here of eternal life, the God kind of life. There are different kinds of life. Come on. And he says, though you have mortal life, I have come that you might have life. And this life is saying, it's eternal life. It's a gift from God. But anyone have the gift and don't put it to use. It is of no benefit to them. It must produce the fruit of righteousness. Come on now. It's not just talk about his righteousness. It is practicing righteousness just as he did. As we read in 1 John 3 verse 7. Huh? Just as he did. So we cannot just say he got it. He's the only one. No. He came that we would follow him into that life. He became partakers of our mortal life for us to be partakers of his eternal life. He partook of our mortal temporary state in flesh and blood. But he demonstrated that life even while he was in flesh and blood. That he lived above sin come on he didn't live as fallen men and he's not calling us to live as fallen men that's why he calls for us to be born again the born again doesn't come 
to be born again as fallen men. But to be born again now as children of God. Hallelujah. And what a joy it is to be children of God. <laughs> First John 3 verse 1 to 3. John speaks about this joy. He says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. See the exclamation sign? <laughs> we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. He said, Beloved, when now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. In other words, we are going to take a different form than this human form we have now. It does, has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know when he is revealed. We shall be like him, for we shall what? See him as he is in his true form. Hallelujah. Because he put off his form to put on our form. Come on now. But he says, we now shall put on his form to be conformed to the image of his son. Come on. So he says, everyone who has this hope in him, what do they do? Purifies himself just as who? As Christ is pure. There it is again. Hush. You have to get it. It's good medicine. Take it, man. It's going to work. It's going to cure that sickness of sin in you and destroy the appetite for it that, will, that is making you vulnerable to the devil. Because not only does the Lord forgive you of sin, but he said he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. He what? Cleanses you from all is the unrighteousness that lead you into sin unrighteous desires unrighteous passions unrighteous cravings unrighteous emotion towards things that are forbidden by god he says when he cleanses you from sin forgive you of your sin he didn't just forgive you but he also cleanses you from all unrighteousness it's important to remember that from first john 1 verse 9 <laughs> hallelujah that is not just forgiveness you get but you get a cleansing to remove what would attract more stain and dirt he removed the cause come on hello you being born of God, you are led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Come on, somebody. You are what? Led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Paul said it in Romans 8 verse 9. Romans 8 verse 9. Well, in verse, take it from verse 7 to verse 9. Give them more meat on it. Paul says, because the carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. It's hostile against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So he says, so then those who are what? In the flesh cannot please God. But did Paul end there? No, he said, but you, you who? You the saints. You who are born again. He says, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. What's the condition? If indeed the spirit of Christ, spirit of God dwells in you. That spirit must, it was not visit you. It's not come upon you occasionally. Dwells in you. He says, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, that's not his. That's why I say, I never knew you. Come on. Though they said we prophesied, we cast out devils, 
We did wonders in his name. He will say, uh-uh. Not all that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter. Not all that said Jesus Christ is Lord is in the family. <laughs> it's more than just saying Jesus Christ is Lord. He said, if you believe he's Lord, obey him. And if you are obeying him and following him, you would not sin. That's why I said, if you abide in him, he who abides in him does not sin. There's no if and but. There is no maybe. There's no might. There's no chances are. This is no gamble. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. No, it's a sure word. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever abides in him does not sin. 1 John 3 verse 6. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. They don't know him. Because if you know him, he said, if you know the truth, the truth what? Set you free. And what is here set free from? Sin. Now that you're set free from sin, now you become a son. Because you are being led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit, these are what? These are sons of God. They didn't just believe on Christ. They are being led by the Holy Spirit into that life. Into the life of Christ. And it's a life of holiness. A life of righteousness. A life of faithfulness, commitment, and obedience to God. Come on. Paul spoke about that in Philippians 5. Verse 2. 2 verse 5. And Philippians 2 verse 5 to 9. He says, they let this mind, huh? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, there it is. He have his own form, different from the form of man. Look at that. Being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of what? No reputation, taking the form. That's a different form he took to come here, putting on human flesh. He have a different form as being the son of God, as being God. But becoming man, putting on the form, was the body that he put on. He says, coming in the likeness of men, being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to what? To the point of death. In other words, unwavering obedience. That's the life he called us to. That is eternal life. It is the disobedience that produces sin. And it's sin that produces death. It is obedience that will produce righteousness and the righteousness of God reveals his eternal life come on somebody he says being found in the appearance of a man he humbled himself and what became obedient to the point of death and he says not just any death but even the death of the cross he still remained obedient he says nevertheless not my will but your will be done he embraced it come on hallelujah hallelujah and he said also in uh, in uh, isaiah 53 verse 10 to 13 hallelujah in isaiah 53 verse 10 to 13 it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. 
who bruised him the lord bruised him he has put him to grief who put him to grief the lord put him to grief when you make his soul who made his soul an offering for sin the lord made his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed who shall see his seed the lord shall see his seed and it says he shall prolong his days who shall prolong his days the lord shall oh come on somebody you need to embrace the word the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant so the lord call him the lord call our lord his righteous servant the same one that david said the lord said unto my lord sit at my right hand come on the lord calls his lord his servant he says by his right his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquity huh he shall what oh come on somebody we can't continue like we did before and say we have received christ that's making a mockery of the life of christ and causing more people to mock the name of christ because we seemingly bear the name in vain if you got the name and there is power in the name and the first thing we know about that name when they said name that bore jesus is that we know that he said call him jesus for he will save his people from their sins not with their sins from their sins he can't save you from your sins and you're still in bed with sin come on you are not saved to be in sin you are saved from sin come on that's matthew 1 verse 21 all right come on so he told them that's how you're gonna come and become a son you must first be detoxed flushed out washed cleansed from your sin and from all unrighteousness and embrace the life of christ that's why it says to as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of god that's saint john 1 verse 11 to 12 12 to 13 yes yeah, right. that's all right hallelujah so it says they were not born of the will of man nor blood nor flesh but he says they are born of god born of god come on watch that verse it's powerful but john is focusing his teaching to let them know when you are born of god you are a new creation you are not the same that came through the loins of adam that's what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, though he had a lot of activities within the synagogues. He said to Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. Come on. I he said, if anyone is not born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of god say that in verse 3 and verse 5 hallelujah unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and nicodemus asks how can a man be born when he is old how can he a second time can he a second time into his mother can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born you see is thinking still about a natural birth a fleshly birth but the lord wasn't speaking about that regarding born again he said most assuredly i say to you unless one is born of the water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god come on cannot enter 
He's talking, and more than about just you going, he's talking about you cannot inherit the kingdom. It will not be yours. Because what? he be casting people out of his kingdom. So if they were cast out, I mean they were in. But still being cast out. Because the son of man will send out his angels and cast out of his kingdom. It's Matthew 13 verse 41. Matthew 13 verse 41 to 43. He says the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness there it is all who practice lawlessness and all who offend who cause others to do the same that's the offend there and he says and will cast them into the furnace of fire and he says they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father he who has ears to hear jesus says let him hear not everybody want to hear but he says those of an ear for this let them hear some want to create a disturbance and a distraction for them not to hear but he says you who send something in your heart <laughs> that what this preacher is saying to you is true don't let the naysayers let you turn away. Because he said, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't be as them, but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved. Come on, somebody. Stand with me. We're going to pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give him the glory in here. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior. And he's in the world today. Anyone who receive him must know that they have not just received a thought about him. Or just a belief about him. But they must truly receive him. His life being and presence in their life. That their bodies will be as a living sacrifice. A tool to be used to express and to reveal his life in the earth here and now. Come on somebody. Because he said you are to let your light shine before men. He is your light. He is the light of your life. And he says you must let him shine before men. Let him be revealed. Hallelujah. In all that you say and do, that they will glorify what? Your Father in heaven. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And he wants you to truly embrace that life. Come on, somebody. We can't afford to lose it. We can't afford for the devil to rob us of our inheritance in the saints. Because of worldly pleasures and lust and desires of the sinful flesh. But he says we must submit to God. Resist the devil. And the devil will flee from you. Come on somebody. And God has given you power over all unclean spirits to cast them out. They have no right. They have no authority. To your life. Your life is hid in Christ. And when he appear in glory. You shall appear with him. The gates of hell cannot prevail. Against you. Roshama said to. Come on somebody praise him in here. 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 Glory to God. He knows that the devil is raging. Going about like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. But God has not given you over for destruction. He has called you for salvation in Christ Jesus. 
he says by him there is salvation by no other come on somebody he must come through him because he says no one come to the father but by him come on somebody and none can come to him except the father grant them to come and so you got to embrace the calling of the Lord and allow him to bring you into all truth that you will know the truth and the truth set you free and that is to set you free from sin glory to God come on lift those hands to the Lord father in the name of Jesus we come before you and we pray that grace will be released over the hearers today as they heard the word that they will not just be hearers of the word deceiving themselves but be doers of the word for it is the doer of the word that is truly blessed and so i pray that grace will be released that even in their weakness your strength made perfect your strength will be revealed weakness will be will not be an excuse for sin because your strength does not fail those that trust in you you said you shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagle they will run not be weary and walk and not faint so i pray grace over their lives right now make the crooked path straight make the rough places smooth make the mountain into a level plain cut off every unclean spirits and their activity in their lives flush them out now them drop into the pit where they belong let them be chained there with chains unto everlasting darkness until the time of their destruction cramp and paralyze them now under the blood of jesus christ and release the captives out of their hands release the hostages out of the hand of the tyrant release the souls of them who are bound oh god and let them experience true freedom in christ jesus for you said if any man be in christ is a new creation all things are passed away and behold all things are become new and we thank you that you who spoke your word said shall not return to your void but it shall accomplish what you said it for to do it shall uh, do as you please and you watch over your word huh, to bring it to pass and so we embrace your word and mix your word with faith that it will bear fruit in us and more fruit and fruit that remains to the glory and honor of your precious name we give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory right now in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Glory to God. Now, Father, on the account of our faith and in your word, release and dispatch your angelic host to war over us, to dismember dislocate, uproot, plunder, and overthrow every militating spirit against our life, our ministry, our call, our health, our finance, our relationships. Hallelujah. That your glory will be revealed in us and through us in all areas of our life because we commit our lives fully to you. We claim the victory, O oh God, and we give you the glory that rightfully belongs to you in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Come on, give him the praise in here. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Get your word. Be a lamp unto your feet 
and a light unto our path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes, Lord. Hey. You provide fire. I provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. You provide the fire. I provide the sacrifice. Oh yeah, you provide the spirit. I will open up this. Fill me, oh God. Fill me, oh. Fill me, oh. Fill me. Fill me, oh God. Fill.
Come on, give him praise. Glory to God. He wants us to come in that newness of life through his son, Jesus Christ. He says the wages of sin is dead and it still is. Hallelujah. For Paul says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. And he wants you to experience that life. You can have that life now. You're not to wait until you die then say you're going to have it. Because he says he that believe in the son have that life now. He said you have to believe that God has given to you that life. 
you believe that you have that life, then it says, you must live as he will live. Walk as he walk. Practice righteousness as he practice righteousness. Glory to God. And the grace of God will increase more and more upon your life to reveal the presence, the fragrance of Christ in everything you do. Praise God. And that is awesome. Come on, give him the praise. Hallelujah. And it's good to be in the presence of God, isn't it? Praise God. There's relief in that presence. Grace in that presence. You got to keep believing and holding to the word. And greater things will come. Come, my sister, let me pray for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke, that lifts every burden. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we command every unclean spirit to cease the operation in her life and evict them with immediate effect from this body. In the name of Jesus, fire in these hands. Fire, fire, fire. Melt through them, Lord. Melt every one of them. Everyone, 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 everyone. Burn them out. Roshabasa. Your word is like fire. Melt the rocks, O oh God. Melt the hard places. Shekurababo Shalamasa. Slay every usurping spirit. Unclean spirits. Go. Go. Our life now. In the name of Jesus. Leave her alone. The blood of Jesus is against you. I know you hear me. And you cannot resist. You are subjected to the word. You are subjected to Christ. And you are subjected to me. In the name of Jesus. So we crush your work. We break your chains. We break your caterpillar spirit. We break your foul spirit. Out of her mind, out of her spirit, out of her head. In the name of Jesus, let the peace of God that passeth all understanding come upon her, Lord. And fill her, fill, fill, fill. Fill, fill, fill. Fill, fill. Fill her to the overflow. Yes, God, overflow. Saturate, robo her in your anointing. Baptize her in Christ right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Endure with the anointing from an eye. In the name of Jesus. Break every shackle. Every yoke. Every bondage. Every false weights and burdens. Every usurping spirits. Hey, hey, hey. Blasphemous spirits. If you use disembodied spirits, we cancel the operation from her life. We cut them off from her soul. We cut them off from her spirit. The soul of the word spirit is the word of God. And we use the word of God and chop them off now. We declare that they are broken. Strongholds are broken. Every thought, every imagination, every opinion and view that exalts itself in the knowledge of God, we bring it into captivity. We bring every thought into captivity. We bring every thought into captivity. We bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus. To the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus. To the obedience of Christ. Clear her head from every pestilence and plague. Let the grace of God, the anointing of Christ, be upon her head, Lord, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Yebo Shamasa. Clothe her and fill her with your presence. Fill her with your spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, flush out everything that is not of you. Hagibo Shama Sata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Release grace and favor. Grace and favor. Grace and favor. In Jesus' name. Oh, Rabbi Bush. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Somebody praise him in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace and favor. Somebody say grace and favor. Surround me like a shield. Grace and favor of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Surround me like a shield. Grace and favor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, surround me like a shield. Grace and favor for Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, surround me like a shield. Come on, give God the praise right now. Hallelujah! Glory to God. And we count it done in Jesus' name. And take authority over principalities and powers. And declare he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. The Lord reigns. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've been blessed by the word. Time to release so we've already used up all our time. Praise God. We start a bit late, but we still put it in our time. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, we're going to value your sewing. We're going to give a chance to those who are watching online to get the last word. Those who are watching online, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International. We are giving the, the word of God. Hallelujah. And we are encouraging persons to get into the word. This is the word of the kingdom. We, we put a book out there. It's on Amazon.com. Last year we released it. It's called the Gospel of Christ. And subtitled the Gospel that Jesus preached. Realize that other things are being preached from the Bible. And it's been called Gospel because it is taken from the Bible. But there are principles Jesus was teaching. That were called the Gospel of the kingdom. That we must adhere to because those principles teach us how the kingdom of God operates and what we need to do to maintain our position and effectiveness in the kingdom and obtain it as children of God, ears and joint ears with Christ. Amen. So we want you to know more about that, more about the kingdom of God and the principles Jesus have laid out for us in his teachings and more of what the apostles have revealed through the word as we aim to bring you deeper and deeper relationship and fellowship with the Lord through his son, Jesus Christ, and his blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. We want to encourage you to get more in the word so you can read about it and get your order through Amazon.com. You can order the book or you can see more of our teachings on Facebook. Hallelujah. On Facebook, you just look for Richard B. Fagan and some, and send a friend's request. You'll be plugged into the live recording, live streaming of the broadcast. And also on YouTube, we added more scriptures to our YouTube channel. Look for Richard Fagan and subscribe. And you'll find we added some scripture there for your own personal study to give you more meat on the teaching and scriptural references to support the teaching that you'll have a sound and solid word to defend your faith in the Lord. Amen. And so you can check us out there and know more about us through our website. It's Increasing Faith intl.org that's increasing faith intl.org amen and you can of course if you desire to sow to the ministry tithes or offering our love gifts you can send it through the website the options are there on the front page for those who desire to do so when god prick your heart to connect with us don't resist it and say no i won't because it's always for your good to obey the lord because if you don't obey him, he'll still be God. But if you obey him, what a difference it makes. 
for you and for those who hear you. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we encourage you. Get in the word. Get in the power. Walk by faith and see the power of God manifest in your life like never before. These are the last days, but it's not end days for us. Hallelujah. It's end days for those who don't believe. But it will be glorious days for those who are trusting in him, moving from glory to glory. Praise God. So we encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Any other questions you want to know about us or the ministry, or get in contact with me. You can call me at 876-839-9390-876-557-2427. Looking forward to hear from you. All information is on the screen. Be strong in the Lord until next time. God bless you all. Praise God. You've been blessed today. Let me release your praise, God. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace and anointing that is at work in us, through us, and upon us. And so we praise you that what you've begun, you're more than able to complete and bring it in its fullness as we give you the glory and the praise. We claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord open his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you all. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Amen.